the gay guys said I had nice pecs. Did they? Yeah. See? I can get them. Pretty sure I can get the uh, dark-haired one. Really? The blonde's a holdout. <laughs> I don't know if he wanted it. Uh, Howard, can I just say something very David quickly? Letterman, thank you. Yeah. I, I just want to say very quickly, you know, I, I'd like to uh, take a minute to uh, pay tribute to uh, Buddy Epson. Uh, he was, All right. Yeah. You know, he was a kind, sweet uh, soul and a, and a genuinely nice and kind man, and he was uh, warm and unpretentious. And, and, you know, like me, he hated Jews, and, and one of the biggest <laughs> Jew haters in Hollywood. <laughs> Buddy Epson will be missed. All right, stop that. <laughs> right. That's David Letterman's bizarre yeah, sense of humor. I don't think Buddy needs your help. Right. Let's just explain. Dave's not allowed to do that kind of humor on TV right. normally. Right. Being here with us, he's allowed to. Uh, a lot of guys are on the phone. They want to know why we had gay guys on. I thought it was interesting to do Artie Makeover and see what he looks like. I thought it would be a good segment. Um, some guys feel it's too gay. What can I tell you? The show's very popular. Somebody's got to be watching. Yeah. That's right. The girl who called up with the hepatitis C is on the phone again. She's mad at me. Uh-oh. Why she's mad at me, I don't know. I don't know what I did to her. Why are you mad at me, Karen? Um, Howard, I'm not mad at you. It says here you're I'm really I'm pissed. I'm upset because... What did I do to you? Because I'm dying. Yeah. And... Pamela Lee has about 10 years to go, you know, before she's going to be sick. And you don't know that. Yeah, I do. Some, all right, yeah. Honey, why are you mad at me? And, and I, I put, then, I put and, you and, on. And, hey, let me, let me review for you. This, and you listen to this, you know... Let me review for you. ...for about half an hour. Honey, 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 listen to me. What? You called me up. You said you had hepatitis C and you were dying. I said, I'm sorry to hear that. I wished you well. You said you had a message for people that there is a drug. Let me see if I got this right. Tell me if I'm saying something wrong. You told me there's a drug that could help people like Pamela Anderson and people with hepatitis C. You mentioned the drug. I thanked you for your call. What, else, what, what have I done to anger you? What more do you want of me? The fact that, that you talked to that wacko woman... For about half an hour. But whoa, 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 whoa! Forget about what else I do on the show. You called me. I said, "What can I do for you?" You let out your message. I thanked you for your message. I wished you well in life. What do you want of me? What does everyone want of me? What do you? Why would you be mad? I did what you wanted, and you're still angry. Do you understand? There's no filling you. No, there is. So what do you want of me? Why would you be angry? You did your thing. You got on the air. I would just think that we, you would care. I Did I not care? Did I say to you? No, you what, didn't care. Who says I don't care? What do you want me to do with you? I'll, you know what I'm going to do? You're on the air. Go ahead. Do whatever you want. I'm going to shut up for the rest of the show. You take over. What do you what want me to do? do? What, you do you, what is your show? fantasy? You know what you do? You, you take the people who are crazy... And, but and, you're not, you're, and, and you put them on the air. All right, now I have you and, on the air. The what people, is it you want me to do? What? Now what do you want me to do? Now you're on the air. You want to do the news with Rob? And what do you want to do? I thought I was a gentleman to you. I thought I addressed your situation. You're upset with the length of time you're on the air? No, I'm upset. You're upset that I'm on the air with another woman I'm and a half hour and you only three minutes? You're not going to let me talk, aren't you? Well, tell me what you're upset about. I'm upset about the fact that you're you're obsessed with a crazy woman for half an hour, and then I'm trying to, to, to put a message out, you know, and say that there's a medication that can help people. So you said that. So you're upset about the length of time you had on the air versus the length of time the crazy woman had on the air. Oh, God. Is that correct? Am I wrong? Is that what you're saying? Isn't it a concern to you? I listened to you. I put out the name of the drug. I heard what you had to say. You uh, still yeah, feel, yeah, blase. You still feel like you're, I'm not. What should I do? Should I jump out of my chair? I think this you know one is missing you know what, the gist Howard, of the show. I loved you for, for years and years. I love you, ma'am, but I don't know what your criticism is. 
What do you want Her of me? The criticism is you spent a lot of time with a person who was very entertaining and not very much time with a woman who had a serious topic. Oh. Thank you, Robin. But I spent the time I felt necessary. You got your message out. I thought you were done. Is there something more you need to add? You, in other words, no, you I called up with a mission. I allowed you to speak, and you're still mad. There's no satisfying you. Do you see that? No. Should no, I do a whole four that's hours that's on this? Would you listen to me? I've listened. This is insane talk. No, it's not. All right. Tell me what I'm it is you want. You, I'm dying. I heard I'm that, and I'm sorry. Dying. Okay. Goodbye. Bye-bye. I don't know why she's angry. I'm angry you're dying, too. Robin, do you understand? I, I tried to, yes, I do understand, and I also understand, I mean, he couldn't handle it. I can handle it. No, you didn't want to he talk did. to her about the fact that she's dying. But she didn't want to talk about it. Yes, she, she wanted did. to, so Why then talk. She keeps saying it. Oh, you want to talk about that you're dying? I thought we had covered what you wanted to talk about. You wanted to announce to the audience that there is a drug that can help people. Yeah. And you announced yes. the name of it. What and is the name I, I of that did, drug? I did want to put that out. Good. But, now you want to put out more. So go ahead. Put it out. Talk, you talk with a, you know, wacko oh. fucked lady. Oh. Oh. I'm oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. So tell me what you want to say. What What didn't we cover? I'm dying. Okay. I'm, I feel badly about that. As I said before, I really am sad that you're dying. It's not fair. It sucks. What can, what can I tell you other than I am very sorry for you? That's all I wanted to hear. Of course, that's what I said before. No, you didn't. I absolutely said I feel bad. I think you said, uh, well, I wish you well. So I you do. Know. I wish her well. No, I really do. I wish you, you well. I wish, really I wish any, you a miracle in your well. life that you, that something happens where you can live. You're one of my listeners. Why would I want one of my listeners to die? It's hard enough to get listeners. Well, you don't want to, you know, lose this one. No, you I don't. I do not. For years. All right. Well, thank you for listening and thank you for calling me with this message Howard yes David I, I have a question for this woman is she still on the phone yes uh, I'm just curious have you turned yellow <gasps> oh come on Dave that's just not funny that's just not funny you, you do that on your show not on mine you're fired he's fired man no not at all I'd like to do the show what I'd like if I can Howard to do maybe, the show with maybe, you and Robin. You know what, Howard? Maybe, maybe you can do. I feel bad that this is going on. I just, I, I, I always feel bad after I hang up the phone when someone calls with a, a disease or a life or anything, and they call back and they go, "I don't feel satisfied with what you've said." So I, I get, I put you back on the air in an attempt to understand, and I'm trying to explain to you that I do feel badly. If I was in your shoes, I would. What? And Robin back. All right, Robin is a saint. Oh no, I'm not. Come on. What, well, I'm sorry. I'm you know I'm trying to keep the show moving along. We're not a medical show. We're not a uh, we're not a Z Morning Zoo. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I tried to handle it in a succinct when, manner when with being. When I talked to you the first time, <sighs> we talked for about twenty for, minutes. Tw well, fine. So not every time can I do twenty minutes. You have to understand, I do a show. There are a lot of people out there. Oh. With the All right. Well, I'm trying to be compassionate. But I really am. Struggle. But I'm not doing well. I admit it. <laughs> and I, I am sorry if you think that I don't care, but I do care. I do have the pressures of keeping the show moving along and keeping the show oh, humorous. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, here we go. Do your show. Okay, Bye. I'll stop doing the show, man. Thank you. I never heard of anything like this. I, I tell thought you, you two were going to come to some happy resolution there for a while. Uh, but I guess it is. There's no like satisfying her. That turned ugly. Oh. I am telling her I feel bad. I do. I don't know. If I it's... know you do. I understand that you were uncomfortable in that situation and you wanted to move along. Yeah, I mean, I kind of felt today we didn't have, you know, we're not right. going to do a 20-minute hepatitis C right. conversation like we did the previous time with her. And Unfortunately, she's the person mm. who's dying. And I feel really bad. I'm sure I'm dying, too. 
you know, and and I know that this is important to her and it's important to me. But I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I thought I was being very compassionate. I did. Very difficult position. My position. I'm the one who you should feel bad for. Always. <laughs> very difficult to satisfy the public. My demands. Uh, the people demand my time constantly, <laughs> and it is hard to satisfy all of my people. All right, I'm going to try to drum up some sympathy. For you. <laughs> Gary, send her an autograph photo of me, please. It's a perfect example of why you're the king of all media, not Bob Hope. You think he ever had to deal with that? Nothing. <laughs> no. She's dying, but I'm under a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. You got to hang in there. I got to hang in there, Dave. Please, everybody, understand what Howard is going. Yeah, right. you know, yeah, try to understand my problem. <laughs> no, yeah. Yes, Chauncey, you're on the air. Howard, oh, two quick things. One, it, it, her problem was she's a longtime fan, and yes. she expected you to have a different reaction. I would hope that I life. have come across as Chauncey. Chauncey, be quiet. What? But why do we have you calling to tell us what just happened? Well, no, well, I was on hold like Cha while, Chauncey's never had a show and had to keep it moving we along. We know what just happened. But, but Howard, we know what happened. We don't need you to explain know, what I, happened. I, I, I know. On a, dip, on a different note, and I don't mean to bum you out about this. What a nut. But can, do you know how you love to barbecue? Yes. Oh, you're not going to tell him this. this. Well, tell me what. Do you know what I'm going to tell him? Yes. What are you going to tell me? <laughs> well, your one joy in life is about to be ruined. There's a new scientific study that came out that said if you barbecue for two to three hours, that you actually, it's like having 22,000 cigarettes. Get and out of good. here. And First you, of all, you're talking about a gas grill versus charcoal? What are you talking about? Uh, barbecue on a gas grill. Gas or charcoal? Gas. Or maybe, you know what? Wait a second. You don't, don't even know what you're talking about. Wait, hold a second. Period. No, they don't, make that clear. they don't make that clear in the article. Right, well, why do you go do more research? Before you just make statements. You don't even know what you're talking about. It, it wasn't in the article. They didn't make it clear. It well, then, then before like you that. call they in, do some research. Doing. They said, who's they? The scientists that did the study. What scientists from where? They don't list that in the They don't article. list it. You don't know it's if it's gas name. versus charcoal. You don't know anything. But you're going to call up and try and bum me out. I'm going to do some research and find out about Why it. Why don't you do that for once? He was just See, so excited ask, about let, telling let me you grilling is going to kill you. Yeah. Do you use charcoal or gas? I'm assuming I use gas. gas. Okay, I'll look into it. I'll get back to you. All right, it. thank you, Chauncey. I assume Do it's your gas. usual thorough research. I'm sorry. I'm sorry this happened. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was interesting, wasn't it? Barbecues may be hazardous to your health with fumes from two hours of grilling releasing the same level of carcin, carcer, no, or cancer causing dioxins right. as 220,000 cigarettes, scientists say. I'm sure the odd barbecue is not going to have any effect, said biologist Desmond Hammerton. But if you have a barbecue once or twice a week and all crowd around it and inhale the fumes, then over 10 or 20 years, maybe the, that would do something. So we don't know what kind of barbecue they're talking about. We don't, we don't know the name of the scientist. We don't, oh, no, we do. Yeah. Biologist. Biologist. I don't know if he was the one who did the study, but we don't know what kind of study he did. Yeah, we don't know anything about this. They're just going to say, and then you'll never see anything about this again. Oh, it's so stupid. Oh, please. Just in case I'll give up grilling anyway. Oh. Hey, Howard. <laughs> what is it, Dave? Can I just say something? Speaking of barbecues, whatever happened to President Bush's drunken daughters? Have they given up booze or they just moved on to snorting Ritalin? What do you think? I don't know anything about it, Dave. Right. <laughs> Speaking of barbecuing? <laughs> I don't know. I and mean, they're not drunks. All right. All right. Robin, what's in the news? In the hey, I, I need a nap. <laughs> you need some of Casey's medication. Oh, my God. It's like, you would think I was share. the president of the United States. <laughs> hey, you want to come to the spa with me and the gay guys? No. <laughs> Good luck to you. Yeah, you need to mellow out. The gay guys are out there talking to Dana on the phone. I can't go with the gay guys. I'm doing a very serious show about medical problems. <laughs> They're talking to Dana? Why yeah. are they talking to Dana? They wanted to talk to Dana. I don't know. Hey, in the email, someone said, I just heard a rumor, and it comes from a reliable source. Please say it isn't so that Artie and Dana have broken up. Where'd that come from? No, I don't know. You guys haven't broken up, have you? Absolutely. A reliable source. Absolutely not. Hmm. Who could that have been? Who is, oh, here's another one from the email. Question, who is allowed to use your personal bathroom? <laughs> one person, me. Why would it else be a personal bathroom? Yeah. 
Occasionally we have had, con- you know, people from the show in there. We'll have to change. Who are changing. Or yeah, but nobody uses it but me. If you can help it. Yeah, I, I refuse to use the men's room here at the radio station. It's disgusting. I do. I put my foot down on one thing. I'm not using it. I've never seen anything yeah, like it. Did something happen to your bathroom? Yes. There's some I did weird. I see a plumber coming toward it the other day. Yeah, there's some weird brown stuff floating around the toilet. It looks like somebody took a, you know, a, a nasty bowel movement. Really? Yeah, but it's some sort of backup with the pipes, or it's just like sewer water in there. Oh. And it bums me out because then everyone can point a finger to me like I did something weird. Right. You know, as you said that, Evil Dave had a weird smile on his yeah. face. Mm. I just, I just, I had this weird dream uh, last night coming home. A, a naked Ricky Martin. Uh, is on his knees at the door waiting for me with you know which with his mouth open like a baby bird does that does that make me uh, the man or the woman in the relationship what do you think the man yeah yeah you're the you're the dude <laughs> yes uh, casey Yo, i want you know that i've been investigating who dropped the deuce in there yeah i haven't come up with any leads yet but i've been you know just i want you to know that it's under control because the the, uh, the key wasn't like people could get in there now it's hidden nobody can get in all right good so it's i mean thank you it was probably happened like one time and I haven't figured out who did it yet, but I got theories. All right, good. Hey, Howard. Yeah, Dave. You, you know what I like to do uh, after I tape my Can TV Can you speak show? up, Dave? I say, you know what I like to do when, after I tape my TV show? I like to go uh, into the female stars' uh, dressing rooms after the show and uh, rummage uh, through the trash and look for their used tampons. <laughs> and then I, then I sell them on eBay. <laughs> That's what you got to do, buddy. <laughs> Supplement that income, Dave. There you yeah, go. You can buy Terry Gar's tampons. That's What's right. in the news? Uh, you know how the other day I was saying that you can get any woman at some point? Yes. Well, I guess anybody practically can get Elizabeth Taylor now, if you believe what you read in the paper. I'll give it Here to her. Here was a woman who was <laughs> one of the most beautiful women in the world right. 40 years ago. And now she's, uh, you know, her last husband was a construction worker. And uh, now she's, I guess banging her butler or something? Wow. Because a landscaper at her place is now suing the butler for making advances at him, which sounds like the butler may be gay. And in the suit, the man says that the butler reveals that he has been having a sexual affair with uh, Elizabeth Taylor, but that he has to take Viagra to get aroused for the old trampoline is what he says. Oh, <laughs> the old trampoline. I just hope it's not true. So uh, that's what happens sometimes. Howard, the rich and famous. Yes, Dave. Oh, by the way, have, have you seen the Eminem's uh, seven-year-old daughter? Now, no. Now there's a piece of ass right there. Oh, really? Please. What the hell? Please, please, please. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to leave if you're going to continue with All this. Right. All right, that's disgusting. Yes, go ahead, Rob. New warnings are being issued that uh, the Al-Qaeda terrorists may be once again uh, thinking of doing an airline attack. Mm. The Department of Homeland Security has issued an advisory to airline and security personnel warning of that. The warning issued over the weekend is based on information obtained in the last few weeks and says the likely targets are the U.S. East Coast, Britain, Australia, and Italy. Why Italy? What did they do? May have been chosen because of their high concentration of government, military, and economic targets. You know, you know, Howard? We haven't uh, done enough over, over overseas to uh, combat al-Qaeda. I say Saudi Arabia goes next. Take it under our control. Yep. Yes. Well, you know, there's still Bush is against releasing the information in that report that would implicate something or someone in the Saudi Arabian government. And now they're saying the reason they won't is because it's still an ongoing investigation. Like we're still looking into what's going on in Saudi Arabia. Hey, in a related story, am I the only one that's excited about Robin's story the other day that uh, this guy took used French fry oil or vegetable oil and can now run cars? They ran cars and buses they, on uh, this? They ran a bus across the I got a letter from the uh, owner of the company, dear Howard and staff. That would be you, Robin. I'm staff. I don't know. <laughs> Who are you? Dear Howard and staff. My name is George Fox. I'm the managing partner for Synergy Solutions, which is a company that makes biodiesel. This is the product that Robin was speaking about in her story today on the bus running on used vegetable oil. As I was listening to Robin speak about this bus that is using vegetable oil as fuel, it occurred to me again how vulnerable we are in this country concerning energy. 
This is not a new technology and, in fact, has been around for many years. Yet our policy of oil consumption subjects us to the will of people who would rather kill us than live with us. Mm. Uh, the sad truth is, however, that this technology could create vast amounts of usable energy and it's ignored by the very people at risk, the Why? American people. I don't know. My company, however, intends to change that, and we will be the first company in New York to produce and distribute this needed resource for our country and national security. Please call me if you'd like further information. I would certainly like to know what it takes to convert a car. Uh, Gary, uh, call this gentleman and book him on my show tomorrow, my, my very important show, where everything is serious. Where we take care of medical oh, oh, problems, oh, oh, mental oh, problems, oh, and now yeah. the energy problem. The whole show's been filled with mentally ill people. <laughs> if that guy has hepatitis C, he's a home run guest. Right. Oh, Oh, dear. <laughs> Meanwhile, they keep saying they're getting closer and closer to Saddam Hussein. And he put out a tape yesterday. At least they say it was Saddam, Saddam's a voice on the tape where he acknowledges the deaths of his sons and uh, calls them martyrs. I have the tape if you want to hear it. Let me hear Great. But they've uh, they've done tests. It's his voice. Is it? Yes. Well, then, good. He's yeah. still out there talking. Uh, let's grab it. Right. Sean Penn was seen uh, the other day talking on his cell phone, yelling. At no one. At someone. And saying, why is Colin Farrell getting all the movies that I should be getting? No, that was me yelling that into my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got a point, Robin. <laughs> Because you're about 50 years old, dude. Well, that's one thing. They say Colin is 27 and he's 43. How could they be available for the same roles? And uh, someone speculates that maybe his trip to Iraq last year turned some people off. Yeah, it might have, might have turned a few people yeah. off. Maybe that's it, Sean. <laughs> Howard? Yes, uh, Dave. You know, I, I had a, last night, I had a, I had a rough night. I, uh, I beat, you know, I beat uh, and uh, kicked the uh, pizza delivery guy in the face breaking uh, his jaw in three pieces, and he looked like an Arab terrorist. And then I, I, uh, I bound his uh, thin uh, body with rope, stuffed a sock in his mouth and uh, to muffle his screams for help and used the back uh, of his neck uh, for as an ashtray. And then I stuffed him uh, into the trunk of a car uh, where he managed to set himself free, uh, and then I stabbed him. <laughs> and then I yelled, Go back to Iraq! Turned out he was uh, Puerto Rican, and I apologized, and I gave him a $10 tip. Was that before or after your gay dream? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. All right, Dave, thank you. We'll watch your show tonight. Evil Dave Letterman show. Um, yeah, we got to take a break. We'll come back. We'll wrap up the news right after these words. Howard Stern is a working class hero. Entire media elite has regarded him as a Bulgarian, as a, a talentless uh, a troublemaker. But for me, he is a master of the microphone in the main line of Lenny Bruce. And he speaks for all those working stiffs out there who are on the way to a job in the morning that they hate. The Howard Stern Show. Right. Robin, time for more news. All right. Yesterday, when Benji brought this up at lunch, I thought he was crazy. But the Pentagon floated the idea of creating a futures market where you could um, buy shares in when you think a next terrorist attack would come or an assassination would occur. you got to be kidding me. No, I'm not kidding. I they thought his decided... gift was a goof. I didn't realize that story was real. <laughs> yeah, that story was real, too. They decided not to go through with it, but the Pentagon said the reason they wanted to do it was they could maybe tell when things are going to happen, you know, because if somebody had insider information, stock prices might go up and stuff oh. like that. All right, this but they said maybe this was a little too gruesome to get into. We better try something else's intelligence. So they're not going to do that. I like it. You'd be <laughs> into that. I'm in favor of it. And uh, just how much would you put up if... Uh, Bianca remains Stamos. Right, my dog. We're kidnapped. Or dognapped is what they're calling it. Zero. In Copenhagen. Nothing. Nothing. A dognapped is threatening to kill a sickly beagle and send its owners a videotape of the act if a demand for $10,000 is not met. 
I wouldn't pay it. Go nuts. First of all, it's sickly. So you would uh, just let 13-year-old Skipper? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You can never give in to terrorists. In the horrible hands of somebody who would torture her to death. Yep, Skipper can right. barely walk and is so ill that his owner recently began uh, taking him out for walks in a stroller. Yeah, I know people who do that. They love yeah. their dogs, but you can't give in to these you terrorists. You can't give in to the terrorists? No. That's my new reality show. We kidnap a dog and we see how much we can get people to pay. And you bet. People will come up with some money. You bet on how much you think people will come up with. All right. I would say. And whoever's closest without going over wins. I would say you kill the dog and I'm going to spend five grand for someone to go over there and beat you up with a bat. You bury the dog the, in the backyard. Yeah. The name of the show is called Ransom is Right. Let's be honest. If Fred was kidnapped, I wouldn't pay any ransom. <laughs> The pooch abductor didn't give a time frame as to uh, how long he would wait hmm. before the ransom is paid. So Interesting. Have to see how Skipper fares. So, uh, life on the line there. <laughs> Skipper. And that tie you're wearing could be hazardous to your eyesight. They are now saying that uh, too tight neckties can cause uh, you to get glaucoma. How did the necktie come about? I mean, it's just a useless piece of clothing. I mean, what is that? Where did that come from? Necktie. It shouldn't I even exist. I don't know yeah. who came up with that idea. But men have always been. You know, yeah. like if you look in through the ages, they've had stuff tight up around their necks. Most of the people I wear who wear neckties that I know are jack-offs. <laughs> A tight tie can increase blood pressure inside the eye in the space of a few minutes. They even say if you wear something too tight around your neck when you're getting a glaucoma test, it can change wow. the results of the test. So loosen up that tie. Look at uh, Tom. His tie gave him cancer. <laughs> right. So you beat up his suit. <laughs> um, also, you know what porn has done for the Internet. I guess they're trying to see what it can do for uh, wireless service. Hey, now. Now, because uh, they're making porn available on uh, your color screen of your cell phone. Yeah, you know, that's the only reason for a color screen on your cell phone when you think about it. Uh, porn is responsible for most of the growth on the Internet. You yeah, that's what I said. You know what it's done for the Internet now. What can it do for color uh, screen wireless phones? It's the only real reason to go on the Internet when you think about it. And uh, it's fantastic. And, and most of the technology that's cutting edge is on the porn websites. You know, they, they, they have... They have the best, the best streaming video yep. and all that stuff. People are willing to pay for it. So, of course, it's Danny Ash who uh, is about to launch this yes. new wireless porn She's a true innovator. True innovator. Of Danny's world. It's being tailored to allow customers to uh, message in to chat rooms and to view video images such as uh, the site's Naked Joke, a daily joke read by a naked woman. She's the Einstein of porn. <laughs> the service will cost about four ninety five a month and also appears on pocket PCs. So look for that at a uh, cell phone near you. <laughs> so Danny Ash still out there innovating. And if you're a big Superman fan, I am. Be an auction you might be interested in if you're a collector of that sort of thing. One of the two remaining outfits worn by George Reeves on that uh, the original TV show, yeah, TV show that was in the fifties will be auctioned off over. It's a size eBay. fifty-two waist. <laughs> that was the fattest Superman so I've ever seen. Last season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's got the S emblazoned on it and all that stuff, and they expect it to fetch about one hundred fifty thousand dollars at auction. Wow! Who knew? A lot of Hollywood memorabilia will be included in the auction tomorrow. Three hundred sixty items for sale, uh, along with the Superman costume. You can get the gloves worn by Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator Two: Judgment Day, and some other things. They expect the auction altogether to uh, raise about a million dollars. Isn't it weird how some things are worth so much money, like the Superman outfit's worth, I don't know, $200,000, but like stuff from other movies is worthless, mm -hmm. and I have no ability to know why. Like I saw Orson Welles or somebody's Academy Award, $500,000 someone wants to bid on, and the Academy is fighting over it. They say they have the right to buy it back for a dollar. or Right. They're not, those Academy no. Awards are never supposed to go on sale. Yeah, the Oscar. 
But then, like, you know, Lois Lane's tampon is worthless. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I got on the show one day. I said, hey, Bill Cosby just drank from a water bottle here. I'll, I'll sell it on the air. And it, the guy came in and goes, it's worthless. No one's going to bet on that. I go, why not? It's Bill Cosby's water bottle. No authentication, No authentication. Maybe. Yeah, I, it's annoying. Every time I try to get into that business, I can. <laughs> when Paul McCartney was here, three people called me to ask for anything he touched. Yeah. And I was like, well, pay for it. And they said, no, no. I don't want to pay for it. Oh, they wanted it free? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And it looks like David Spade is some kind of a player in Hollywood. He had a party the other night, and Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher showed up. Yeah. I don't believe that. Also, Pamela Anderson and Kid Rock. That I believe. He's friends with Kid Rock. So, uh... It was his birthday. Yeah, but you don't think Demi and Ashton showed up? No. No, I don't. Why not? I don't think they like him. <laughs> I think he was late for his Little League game or something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking of Ashton and Demi, in Liz Smith's columns today, she quotes something he said in a magazine, Cosmo, not too long ago. He said, I enjoy casual relationships because I don't like to feel pinned down. Calling yourself a couple can lead to trouble, arguments, and jealousy. If I'm going out with someone, the rule is... If we can be with anyone else, if we feel the need to, as long as we're honest. Spoken like a true good-looking guy. So you think Demi is going for that deal? Yeah, ugly guys don't get to make those deals. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? We're just grateful to have someone. Police. And Son you wonder bitch. why that wonderful marriage between James Brown and uh, Tommy Ray broke up? Yeah, how'd that go wrong? Well, in Cindy's column today, she says that... Uh, Tommy Ray had some kind of deal with James Brown where she showed up everywhere he shows up. We even know here, he never came in here alone once he hooked up with her. He always brought Tommy Ray in. Mm -hmm. Well, when he was doing the BET Awards where they were going to give him a Lifetime Achievement Award, they would not allow her to do the show with him. It doesn't work well when you trot out your white wife. And so <laughs> she immediately filed for divorce Yeah, because huh. she couldn't get on that show. That's it's according to... Cindy Adams. There's a shock. <laughs> I don't know if that could break up such a James relationship. Brown being used by a young white woman? A relationship? I don't believe it. But uh, that's what Cindy says. Anything else? Meanwhile, in show business, yeah. Sylvester Stallone is the villain in Spy Kids 3. And here he explains the plot and his character. A1. Get ready to sleep. It's a uh, real fable that has a great deal of morality, and it's about these three children that get trapped in a game created by... Uh, Wake me up before I go-go. Oh, <laughs> Anything else, Robin? And here he compares the director's uh, style of storytelling. He's like, I don't know if he's going to like it, but it's like, it's like Super Walt Disney. I mean, he really has his own brand of, of child... All right, anything else? Angelina Jolie is in Tomb Raider, the uh, Cradle of Life. Big bomb, big bomb. And here's uh, how she managed to ride side saddle while holding a shotgun for the movie. You're putting a lot of pressure on your upper thigh and your, and your left leg. I wish she was naked in that movie. This, there's this little, this little curve that's made. It's a very specific saddle. But other than that, you just try to really stay. You learn your balance. We did a yeah, you're a genius. Okay, and here she talks about getting a well drilled for the African tribe, which appears in the movie. I asked them at one point if there was something I could do for them or help them out, and they and what did they need? And they said, we need water. So, what a saint. Uh, I thought it was going to be simple. Like in Cambodia, there's certain areas where you just get a well machine and build it. They were in an area we didn't even know if there was water in the ground. We had to survey. Isn't she the best person? I know. Look at her. She's getting wells in Cambodia. That's easy. Yeah. Putting the wells in Africa is tough. Yeah. I've always said she was great. No. Howard? Yeah. Can I just say something? Who do you think has the worst job? A guy who cleans uh, out toilets for a living or Star Jones gynecologist? Star Jones gynecologist. Yeah, that's, right. yeah, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about the passing of Bob Hope. His uh, memorial service, I think, will be held in private today. Here's Woody Allen from a 2002 interview speaking of Bob Hope's comedic abilities, B5. He tosses off those one-liners in a way that if I try and do them or you try and do them, they're Latin, and when he does them, they're it's like a souffle. I mean, it's, it's amazing to me. Oh boy! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> You're doing me a Farrell's daughter. Oh god! It's amazing. Amazing and, uh, to me. It's like ben a souffle. Affleck is yep. about to appear in his first movie with his uh, lady love Jennifer Lopez, but.
The Daredevil CD has uh, also uh, shown DVD. up in stores. What did I say? CD. I'm sorry, DVD. Right. Has uh, shown up on store shelves, and he was asked why he was a fan of Daredevil Comics, D1. I know that when I was a kid, I think there was a contrast between that hero and others in the spectrum of this, you know. He's a horrible actor. I mean, really, he's horrible. He's wooden. If you like yeah. your wood, actors is wood. He's very Howard, good. Can I just say something? I've got some wood. <laughs> yes, Dave. No, does Ben Affleck realize that J-Lo is about three years away from looking like uh, Celia Cruz before she dropped dead? <laughs> Interesting thought. Yeah. I don't and think he knows that. <laughs> Bill yeah. Maher. Yeah. He's back on HBO with Real Time with Bill Maher on uh, Friday nights. Here is natural sound from Real Time. Uh, doing his monologue, Bill Maher welcomes the audience and talks about the death of the Hussein brothers. C1. Good to be back. We've been off for a while. It's nice to be back and with a week with such news and some of it pretty good. Our military, as you heard, in Iraq caught up with the Hussein kids, Venus and Serena. And, uh... <laughs> We got the we got the Hussein boys, and the president has been gloating about it all week. And why shouldn't he? He said, "Finally, some good news. I didn't have to just make up." That's pretty good stuff. Yeah, he's a funny man. He's funny. And here he discusses the Senate report on September 11th. C2. Congress released today their long-awaited 850-page report on how uh, September 11th could have happened. Uh, now, 850 pages—that is a lot to ask anyone to read. So to get the public more interested, the Democrats have retitled it Harry Potter and the Massive Failure of Intelligence. I just realized something. He's funnier when you don't have to look at him. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about this report is that the Bush administration has insisted on deleting large sections focusing on the terrorists' link to a foreign government that we are not allowed to name but it rhymes with body Arabia. <laughs> All right. Well, that's what's happening. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Bill Maher. Thank you, David Letterman. Thank you very much for having me on the show, Howard. I'm sorry you never got the Tonight Show. Uh, that's right. But I just want to mention one thing. Did you know that, that Bob Hope's uh, first real name was Leslie? Well, yes. Honestly, it was Leslie Hope. And in my book, that makes him a bona fide homo. All right. Yeah. You've done enough for one day. <laughs> bonafide. That's, of course, uh, evil Dave Letterman. Yeah. yeah. Not the real Dave Letterman. But you sound remarkably like him. Thank you very much. <laughs> Howard, I'm getting ready for a gay afternoon. Hey, have a good gay day. All right. All right. He's on his way to the spa. Yeah. Thanks to my friends <laughs> over at um, Bally's for a stump the buoy, even though we lost. We still saw the girl naked. It was a happy ending. Sort of. Tonight on the E! Show, Crazy Jessica Rabbit. Check it out. We set her straight tonight on E. And we'll uh, we'll we'll see you tomorrow. That's all. We got plenty going on tomorrow. Bye. That's it. You're setting him up for failure. Yep. Whatever I'm doing, I'm just getting him there. But you're what? setting him up for failure. You know it's weird, uh, Okay. Dominic got a hold of me yesterday after the show mm -hmm. and starts like scaring the crap out of me mm -hmm. about how I said, listen, he's very normal at work. What you know, maybe outside, but when he's here he's very normal. Bob and Dominic Bowie. said, Yeah, but Bob you know Bowie. what? The day could come where he could substitute your Howard as the parent. Right. Bob David Bowie, Spade's assistant was normal until David got attacked. Until the day he snapped. That's right. <clears throat> but I, I, I met Skippy. You. Skippy was a nice guy. Skippy was the greatest guy in the world until he yeah. did that. Look, I was normal till yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Arnie. Dominic. Yeah, I, you know, I gave Gary the PDR, which is the physician death reference. And you should open it to Prozac. Uh, it's a book, Gary. I, I, I hope you found it was delivered to you. And read what it says about PDR, uh, about suicide and Prozac. Yes, Prozac is, is no not joke. a medication you should be on without supervision. Mm -hmm. Actually, give the book to Robin. She'll go right to the page. Seriously, dude, and you've been having suicidal thoughts. Dude, yeah, everybody has, has suicidal no, thoughts. No, I don't. You know what? When I had suicidal thoughts, Casey, I went and got help. But it's, but, but I, it's not something that I would do. It wasn't something I would do, but it right. was indicative of some bad... I'm asking... I think you all... I'm, all asking, you, all, I'm asking you to do it for me. I'm, not, I'm not even asking. I'm telling you to do it for me because I'm not comfortable with it. Everybody has these thoughts, but it's just no. if you... Listen to me. If you... Look at me. I'm being serious now. 
I'm not comfortable around you. Go <laughs> to because you've got strange thoughts and yeah, you're on Prozac so and you. you're going to get all weirded out and you're going to show up here one day bouncing off the walls. No, I'm not. I don't want you in my sight until you go to Dominic's psychiatrist. As someone who I know for many years, you know, lots of people talk to people about problems. But by the way, you just said something, Casey, that's not true. What? Not everyone has suicide thoughts. I've never had them. How well, that's you, just the whole not... point, Dominic. He constantly says that about everything you try to point out to him that's a problem, and he never even talks to anybody. So how would he know what everybody yeah. thinks? I'm yeah. telling you, before I went into therapy, I thought everybody thought the same way, too. They don't. Yeah, but these these are not they're not real. They're, they're just... Yeah, I don't that's know. where you are now. You can sort of tell yourself this is not real, but at some point, it becomes real for you. And not only that, you are on Prozac now which is going to alter your chemistry. And you shouldn't be running around just taking it. You think it hasn't done anything. It hasn't done anything. You don't know that. Casey, can I ask a question? Yeah. When you see things on the TV screen, do you really believe you see them? Yeah, it's, I, you know, I don't know if it's a different if, if I'm awake or if I'm sleeping sometimes. That's the only thing. But but I, I know that when, when I go over there and it's not there, I know it's not real, you know? But you see, you're, when you're seeing it, that moment your brain's chemistry is saying to you, a paranoid thought. Uh, well, they go on with him all the time, Dominic. Yeah. This isn't the beginning of that. But you want to get rid of those thoughts? That's why I went, that's why well, I went to the doctor. But you went to no. the wrong kind of doctor, no. dude. You're going to a general practitioner. I explained it to you yesterday. Go for a stomachache with a general practitioner. Yeah, exactly. This is for some, look, all of us. You know, you live in Manhattan. You had 9-11. You don't think half of New York wants to talk to somebody? It's normal. It's true. Yeah, but, but you know, talking helps some people. And other people that you don't, don't even like know. You haven't talked to. You know what? Just I, I'm telling you to go to this guy. It's getting a little scary. Yeah. No, it isn't. Yeah, stopping. for us it's scary. For no, you it isn't. Not. For us it is. You know how you have to put it, Casey. In order for you to keep this job, you need to make sure we feel comfortable. We need to know that there's been an evaluation of you by someone who does this for a living that says you're okay. Have I, I ever, like that. I like what you just said. Have I ever shown you? That I wasn't in control. We're crazy. Go help yeah. us. How and often do I somebody. hang around with you? Really? No, here, here at work. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Ever had, had anyone here ever been Not frightened the point. of me? No. Not the point. I know. We're now. I'm frightened now. <laughs> frightened now. Yeah. No. We're I'm, not, I'm, I'm we're harmless. Not comfortable. I'm harmless, and I, it's my I only my only fault. Your word for my it. only fault is that I'm honest, and I tell you what I'm I thinking. I can't take your word no. for it. Can Why? Why? Have I ever written. shown you differently? Yes. When? Casey, when you ran you... out of here on September 11th. But I never told you I was staying. <laughs> Casey, what? why don't you go to this, by the, his name is Sidney Katz, he's a wonderful psychiatrist. Why not go to him, not for him, but for him to make a referral then? Because you felt somewhat that he might tell me things. I speak. To, I haven't spoken to the guy in four years, other than to send him clients. He's a wonderful person. He's helped lots of people I know. If you don't like him, he'll refer you to someone else. But I will tell you what his specialty is. And that is uh, these new medications today, which there are so many. Yeah. That's his specialty. See? Mm. Right. And you're going to do it or not? Because you're afraid he'll tell me things, which is ridiculous. Yeah, of course. And no, he, he won't. Crazy, you know. No, he won't. Then okay. go to somebody else. Then get a referral to somebody else. You need you, pills. You think I want to know what's inside your head. What's that going to do for me? Yeah. But well, you have to go to somebody. Else? Who cares what's in we your head? We just want you healthy. Wow. We, we, uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. There's a psychiatrist on the phone right now. Jim, you really a psychiatrist? Hello, Howard. Yeah, uh oh. There we Hi, go. I'm not a psychiatrist, but I am a therapist, and I wanted to call in to provide a third party perspective to Casey and let him know the stakes are very high. Uh, he definitely is a candidate for suicide. I've <laughs> dealt with a, I've dealt with a number of men with his personality makeup, and at a certain point, they just burn out and they snap. And I don't think he's really a threat of violence towards anyone on the staff, but I think he's definitely a candidate for suicide. Mm -hmm. And Howard, first of all, though, I do want to say I want to thank you. Uh, you are living proof that laughter can indeed be the best medicine. And this kind of ties in how, to, how I became aware of Casey's problem. I'm a therapist, and I specialize in counseling parents of uh, children who have been the victims of horrible assaults and abuse. And uh, there's one gentleman I'm working with whose uh, son was you know, horribly killed. Um, he was seven years old, killed by a neighbor. And... I was doing everything I could uh, to help this gentleman, but I'll tell you, Howard, you and the staff on your show were, I think, uh, the best treatment providers he could have had because he told me a number of times that your show was the only thing he had to look forward to. Well, that's beautiful. Thank there were you. all kind of stressors in his marriage. He said, uh, his "Well, life thank was you." Falling apart, but 
Thank truly, you. he could look forward to waking up, and your show is the one thing that could bring some levity. And That's very nice of you. Th thank you, Omar. But I, I just want to follow up with Casey. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you. A lot of these guys like to hear themselves talk. Yeah, yeah go ahead. On a roll. Yeah. You know that's, what, that's what I would get if I went to a place. Oh, stop it. No, no, you stop wouldn't. it. No, you wouldn't. He's a nice guy. Yeah. You know what's, what's interesting about Casey? Because he uses this joke around the office a lot, and he used it with me. But I, I, I thought about it one night, and I go, man, that's sort of depressing. Uh, there's a comedian who has a line. He goes, you know, life is like a movie. That, that's the most brilliant thing. D Doug Stanhope said that. It's, it's hilarious. It's life funny. is like a movie. If the first half sucks, it's probably not going to get any better. I was telling a joke. And I'm thinking, this is a 25, 26-year-old guy who thinks that the best has already happened. It's not going to get any better. Uh, you guys right, here's Tom way, to, way too much. Tom it's, it's, Chisano the guy was telling a joke. Tom will straighten this whole thing so, out. If this is serious, there may be programs, and we have to find out, within, within Viacom, that can help employees who you know who has a problem, a mental problem. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You, because when did this turn into this? Is like now, it's like an invention. Well, I was, I was out here talking about some stuff if that, do, that might be listen, entertaining. Tell Tom what your thoughts if are. If you're thinking about suicide, no, I'm not. Yes, I never you are. said that. When she, didn't you say you were thinking about if, sometimes if you kill your mother and your and your brother and you, you'd be, be better off. And I can say would be better that. off if you weren't here. Uh, no, I never. I understand that. I understand why understand? people do that out of love, but not out of not of anger because they don't like the people. What's with the dog? <laughs> What's wrong with my dog? You don't like the dog here, either? I love the dog. You do. I think the dog's and right. Robin's busting my balls. I'm not busting <laughs> anything. I'm not busting anything. Just want to well, register put back in its mouth? that for a there little... will be people put, who are concerned. Could the dog put the tongue back in its mouth? I thought it would be fun <laughs> to bring the dog in for the day. That's all. <laughs> I love the dog. Everyone's saying now you're going to bring your horse in as retaliation. That's <laughs> right. And you want to see a mess. <laughs> let, let me just get, because i got to get serious. through a lot. Prozac has been reported to lead to suicidal tendencies to some people. So I think he should get his medication checked out by a, a psychiatrist. A, a serious, yeah. That's GP, all I'm saying. You don't go to a GP, right, for Prozac. Look, I, I got to tell you, I'm not. I don't think I'm comfortable with this situ with this conversation. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. You're not comfortable with a lot of things. No, so I, 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 it turned out to like you asked me some questions just, and then I told you, and all of a sudden it turned out to this big thing when everybody's coming against me and saying, "We're that, not coming against, I'm not against, against you. you. I'm trying to help it's you. I'm trying to help you. And saying like, we "Hey, you, you. got to do this and you got to do that." No, I, I, dude, everybody knows me as like a nice guy. I am. You know, it's, you don't have right. to worry about anything. Case, if you want to get comfortable, put on this sport jacket. <laughs> Casey, I ask you to do me a favor. Now go do it. I, I'll go once. Thank you. To the guy. Good. Go. And you take his evaluation. What right. evaluation? What does that he mean? He will determine what you really should oh, be so he's doing judge for treatment or medication. So he's going to judge me. No. He... So you know what I'll do? I'll do what everybody else does. And I'll, and I'll, you I'll know, go in. You had an, a pain in your stomach <laughs> and a doctor told you you have appendicitis. Is he judging you? No, no, no. No, I, I'll do what everybody else does and I'll just pretend that these things don't exist and just I won't even think oh, about it. Oh, God. No, you know what? I, let me give you an example. Years ago, the, the roach that wouldn't die me went to a GP to talk about a lump under his arm. GP said, you know what? It's fine. It's a lump of fat. Don't worry about it. I said, you know, I'm not comfortable with that. I went to a different doctor who said, I, I think I agree with the GP, but you know what? You should go see a cancer specialist. The cancer specialist said, it's no lump of fat. It's melanoma. If we don't fix it, you're going to die. So I went to the and found the right doctor. That's a know? perfect analogy. Yeah. In other words, you went to a GP. He's like, you know, here, take some Prozac. Right. He gave you a little yeah. test that comes in the box. Yeah. I mean, please. That Prozac gives that test. Yeah. You go to a psychiatrist who deals with medication all the time. He can say he can say to you, "Listen, he's not, he's not judging you. He's saying, you know what? I don't think Prozac's right for you. What do you think about this course of action?" He'll discuss it with you, or he might even say to you, "I don't think you really need Prozac." In other words, case. In other words, what Tom's saying is true. Your head might mm. be a lump of fat, but could it, it could also be cancer. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, huh. no, hey, you know, don't waste my time anymore. Just go. Yeah, right. care. Right. everybody cares about you. No, hey, yeah. I say I don't. I don't want. Now to you're wasting my that. time. Just go. Okay, I'm gone. Goodbye. And I don't want to. Don't bring this. By up the way, I, I'm bringing it up. First thing, you better have made yeah, the appointment. Yeah, you better have made a phone call. Don't even. Don't mess with me. Not on my me. weekend. You no promised way. me. Not on my weekend. Listen Nobody me. said anything about you doing anything on weekend. You promised me. Phone call now. You promised me you're going to make the call. That's good enough for me. I know you're a man of your word. Get out. Get out. And go be the child. On my weekend. Now go be the child you are. That's all. And leave Tom alone. By the way, Tom, what was with the decision not to carpet our office? I heard you said you ran out of money. To carpet which office? <laughs> our <laughs> office. Studio office. You carpeted the whole radio station except for our office. I, you know, I don't, I don't even know why we didn't do that, that office. Yeah, we were told you ran out of money. Maybe. That's insane. Why start? Why don't you go to the psychiatrist? <laughs> I want you evaluated. I have bad news for you. What is it? Um, 
I told, oh. I told you the other day, was I going to have my five year evaluation? Yeah. They told me I'm not dying anytime soon. Oh. I'm that's too bad. To you, right? I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Tom, really sorry. I think that's more great bad news. Sorry. More bad news. Well, you know what? <laughs> Robin doesn't want the dog, and you're going to live. <laughs> Gee, it's great. The, day. <laughs> the, the day is great. Right. All right. All right. Very good. Thank you, Tom. C congratulations on your your long life. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know who's on the phone? I'm just looking over the computer here. And Who? Remember the other day you did this story about how these two guys took a bus. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fuel they're using isn't oil. They're using vegetable oil. Right. The stuff they fry French fries in. They even took used French fry oil. And the cars run the same. Yeah, they that. stop at, um, instead of going to a gas station, they stop at fast food joints and take their used vegetable oil. Mike. Hey, how you doing, Howard? What's the name of your company? Uh, actually, I work for Bailey's Recovery Systems. I design and manufacture equipment for cooking oil storage. No. Oh. And you figured out how to use this as a fuel? Well, I've been using it since the early 1900s. The diesel engine was designed to run on peanut oil when it was first designed by Rudolph Diesel. Mm. So what, 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 to explain to me simply. Don't get the whole mumbo-jumbo. What's the problem? Why can't I go to McDonald's and take their used French fry oil and put it in my car and run it? Why, why, what is, why are we dependent on Arab oil if you're saying these engines are running and they're running as good and as... And we got plenty of vegetables. Right. Well, you can do it. You can actually run two different things. There's biodiesel, which is vegetable oil that you put through a chemical reaction. And I'm asking you a question. Why yeah. aren't the car manufacturers using this and freeing us from arab oil well there's probably not enough uh vegetable oil to run a major city for more than a day but oh. you could you could run fleets like city fleets garbage trucks dump trucks you're telling me trucks, stuff really like that on it. it's hard to get vegetable oil i see it in the supermarket well it's there but the price per gallon compared to petroleum diesel they oh. have not come down and met one another oh. but what about used oil like like you were using. Like you were oh, using. Can, you can use the waste vegetable oil. It's not very readily available, and it's not exactly easy to get out of the dumpster. What hmm. they're doing now is just throwing the used vegetable oil in a garbage dumpster, mm -hmm. and then it rains on it, and it gets rancid, and you have to process the water out of it, and the sediment, and the breadcrumbs, and all that stuff like that. But I do manufacture a filtering machine that I can filter the waste oil mm -hmm. and pump it right into a diesel truck. So once again, we ask, why isn't this being done? Uh, cost, basically because of the money, uh, processing. It, you know, it's a little bit of legwork to try to dive into the dumpster and get the oil out and filter. But if people were now conserving cost. the oil so it could be used for this, it wouldn't be a cost, is what we're well, saying. Well, that's what I'm trying to do with our storage systems here, is we're trying to... All right, hey, thanks, thanks for the call. Bye. I, I, I don't, around and around yeah, I'm not getting. Around. I'm not getting the answers. Yeah. Uh, nice guy, but I don't care. He doesn't get the question. Yeah, we'll be here all day trying to figure this out. I'm bored. Has Ready? he talked to a government official and proposed this? Did you see why you were talking to him? I I, I put a rope up in the corner. I was hanging myself. <laughs> now you're having suicidal thoughts. Yeah. I got to worry about you. Amanda called us yesterday. Remember this chick? She called in from Long Island, and oh. she was, like, really odd. I can't yes. wait to see this. And then she's going to get naked. I'll, right. I'll bring her in in one second, but i got to tell you about this. So Gary brought this up yesterday. I got this in the mail. I brought it in for you, Robin. So some dude who I guess is in the movie industry, and he's looking for a break, yeah. said, screw it. I'm going to make a seven-minute film of Batman, like... I'll never get the rights to Batman, but I'll make a seven-minute film of Batman fights the Joker uh -huh. and Predator. Really? Yeah. Remember Predator uh, from, uh, from the movie, yeah. right? So, I popped this thing in last night. It's Thank so it's good. Be, it is good. It's so good. Because I keep, I've been hearing little whispers about it, and everybody's telling me, you got to see it. Well, the reason the guy made it. It's called uh, Batman Dead End, and it's really frustrating because you start watching it and you realize how into it you are, and then it ends. Seven minutes is seven, all you get. And the seven minutes goes by in a minute. Ooh. So you, you're going to kind of bum out because the credits come on and you go, well, this would be a great place for the opening credits to right, the movie. Right, So the guy's point in making it was, 
you know, I'll put out the seven minute film and I'm saying to the people who own Batman, give me a shot with the franchise. I'm using no name people. It's lying there dead. Yeah, he goes, I understand the comic book. I understand how the movie should be made. I know exactly what it is that needs to be done. Uh-huh. And I think the guy kind of proves himself. So has anybody who actually owns Batman seen this, do you think? I don't know. I, I know they're trying to circulate the thing, and he's not doing it for, like, any other reason than he's trying to... And you don't to... have to buy it. Right. It's pretty... Let me see if I have... The... Yeah, I have the press release on. I, I brought it in for you to watch, okay, but... Okay, yeah, uh... I can't wait to see this. Yeah, it's really good. In fact, I was so jazzed about it that I actually forgot to bring it in. I went, ran back upstairs to my apartment to bring wow. it into you because I thought it was so good. Uh, here, it says, Howard, please take a look at the seven-minute short and the making of the Batman thing. We shot this under the radar. No intention of making money on this. We can't anyway due to licensing and copyright. It's for promoting our talent and skills as director and producers. Hmm. A true and sincere labor of love, commitment, and love for these characters. The piece will speak for itself. Thank you for taking the time to view it. I think you'll be presently surprised. I think they meant pleasantly. Yeah, well, come on. <laughs> you might want to. They're young. <laughs> uh, Sandy Collarer is the director. Okay. Any comments, please call him. We would love your feedback. And uh, that's good. I guess they're doing a screening of this somewhere. What do you like about it? Is it true to the comic book? Is it dark? Um, it's shot well. It's um, the characters seem more real. In fact, Batman's costume kind of looks like the Batman TV show. Like it's not, it's like what a guy would put together if he right. was Batman. Not right. some high tech Kevlar outfit, right. you know. And they're saying their point is, if we had a real budget, maybe we could even get a better costume. So you know? it's made by a guy who just really gets it, like he gets yeah. the whole idea. It, of it. it appears. I mean, it's seven minutes of a film, but right. I think the guy did a nice job, and, and believe me, I'd like to be involved with the guy because it shows that he's a go getter. Went out maybe and made this. You gotta meet him. Yeah, maybe I will. He's worked on a lot of cool movies, but oh, it's yeah? like a special effects guy and. And, you know, he wants to be a director, I guess. I see. He's making, he's trying to make the move. Right. So I guess he's going to show it Saturday, July 19th at the Comic Con International Independent Film Festival. July 19th has already happened. No. Oh. All right. <laughs> Too bad. I thought Too, maybe I was. Uh, let me finish, Robin. 2004. Oh. Yeah. Don't make me look foolish. Yes. What's today's date? It's the 30th 31st. Yeah. or the 1st of August? 31st. 31st. July I don't even 30th. know what it is, but I know it's not July 19th. Starring as Batman, Clark Bartram. You see what I mean? It's like no names. He's Le good. You know, Clark that's a name you're going to hear one of these days. Mm. And it's amazing, too, when you watch it, that seven minutes of a film, the credits must be about a mile long. It takes a lot of... It takes the same amount of people probably to do seven minutes as it does to do two and a half yeah. hours. Uh, that's exactly right. So anyway, this I got this over here for you. You should take a look at it. All right, thank you. And uh, I would like to talk to the guy. I really would. Yeah. All right. In fact, I have uh, some thoughts for him if he wants my if he wants to have a conversation with me. He did say he'd like your input. And Clark yeah. Bartram, by the way, is great. I saw him do Pippin in London. <laughs> <laughs> Those excellent. new clothes have really changed you. <laughs> Yeah. It's the makeover, Robin. The I just gay makeover. I just remembered I saw Pippin. <laughs> um, Kobe Bryant, they got they got some new information in the newspaper. They're saying this, the chick went up to his room willingly, of course, as we knew. Yeah, he didn't drag her up. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. He dragged her by the hair. That's another <laughs> level if he did that. She went up willingly, as we knew, and then uh, they say the sex started out as consensual. And then I guess at some point... What does point, that mean? Does that mean they were making out and she was going for that? Yeah, I'm not clear if it's a make out, if it's her using her hand on him or whatever, how See, far it went. We don't know what that means. So the only I thing I do know what? is that it means they were not having intercourse. And when it came to intercourse, she's claiming she said no and he pushed himself That's on That's what it. I'm asking you. Yeah. So I'm saying, was there some like pre-limb stuff that seemed okay? No, it wasn't like he was banging her and then she said, hey, I want you to right, stop. Right, right. Right. That's what her claim is. He's saying, there was, you know, I got rid of her in 30 minutes and probably insulted her by... He's doing the Mike Tyson defense. Yeah. 
Could something like that mean... Yeah, that, if he drove her home, he probably well, would be having another date. Could something like that mean they're having normal sex and then he wants something like anal or no, something different? No, that's not what the claim is. No. That guy, that uh, guy Norman Raymond, the guy who's Oprah Winfrey, Negro Woman oh, of the yes, South. yes, yes, yes. Raymond Norman. Right, what did I, I say? say you said Raymond. Norman Raymond. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's Raymond Norman. <laughs> Wasn't on the, the tip of my tongue. Get with it. He, uh... Um, Let's keep it real because I'm keeping it real. He sent me a tape on the whole Kobe Bryant mess. Really? He has something to say about that? Yeah, he put together a whole new show about the Kobe Bryant thing. You want to hear a little of it? I was listening to it. It's fascinating to me. All right. Hello. Once again, this is Raymond Norman with another segment of Let's Keep It Real. It's July 2003. Our topic today, the national and international basketball celebrity Kobe Bryant of the Los Angeles Lakers. Now let me seriously say this. Kobe Bryant is a married man. He's already admitted on national television that he committed adultery. Now, he claims that this sexual affair with a 19-year-old woman was consensual. And bottom line, there will be no real winners. In this affair, when it's all played out in the media, he sits in his bedroom. Oh, this is too funny. And he makes these tapes, and he yells into the tape recorder. Yes. Sometimes he does it actually into his video machine. Oh, he does? Yeah, but there's video of this. Oh, my. I love the background yeah. music. Yeah, I, and you are beautiful, Christina Aguilera. Yeah. yeah, is there any reason? Does he pick the music he specifically does. for the subject matter? Yeah, I think it's to remind us that he's very spiritual, and we're all beautiful in our own way. Okay, he's telling. It's subliminal. Mm -hmm. There's another yeah. message going on. Yeah, it's a message. Okay. And uh, he's very concerned about the media, the international media, everything. I love how he says national and international. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, you, you got, yeah. I mean, it's just it's amazing. A, <laughs> he's, he's brilliant. In a Colorado court of law, one thing or a set of things that will come out of this will be, especially for Kobe Bryant, will be shame, humiliation, a loss of his dignity, and possibly in the long run... This is a guy with breasts. I know. A civil lawsuit by the 19-year-old woman. Now, again, also, this 19-year-old young woman is a white woman. Now, the incident is being played out in the media, and it's involving a nasty 20-minute sexual incident in a hotel room behind closed doors. Now, most white women that have had affairs with black men realize that black men indeed are well hung are well endowed when it comes to the black male genitalia area now most women period regardless of what ethnic background they are that are dealing with well hung black men realize they're doing penetration <laughs> oh my goodness let's keep it together and be real about this all consenting adults that hear this tape I'm only keeping it real now in Kobe Bryant's case he is quite tall, and possibly his descendants, and I'm keeping it real, goes back to the African tribe of either the Zulu tribe or possibly the Mandingo tribe of Africa, <laughs> which still has been known since all of known written history that these black tribes of Africa and their descendants have been known to be well hung and well endowed black men when it comes to the black male genitalia. He is hypnotizing. Black male genitalia. It. The black male genitalia area. Area. <laughs> I can tell you, I've been with black men. There is some bruising. Hey, always. <laughs> always. Anyone who anyone who's been with a black man knows. Now you know. Yeah. Yeah. You've been with black men. Is there bruising? I don't recall any <laughs> bruising or tearing. The only thing, <laughs> you're not you're not on the witness stand. The only thing that was bruised with me was my ego. <laughs> so when some women that are not used to having sex with well hung black men, there will be even when you're involved with a well hung black male. And I'm quite sure that's what the situation is. Kobe Bryant is a well hung, tall black male. Now, the facts are the young lady is bruised. These are the facts that will be presented in a court of law. Now, I'm going to say this. Kobe Bryant did not deny the affair. And again, bottom line, something happened in that bedroom in Colorado. <laughs> I could listen wow. to this all day. Oh, oh, in that please. bedroom <laughs> in Colorado. Vagina area. <laughs> 
blackmail genitalia area. Now, this will be presented. <laughs> I'm it's keeping it real. In a court of law in Colorado. Played out in the media and international media. <laughs> you are beautiful in every <laughs> single way. Now, in that hotel room for 20 minutes behind closed doors, and no one really knows what happened in that bedroom but those two. But the shame, the humiliation, and the disgrace truly holds closer to Kobe Bryant because of the fact that he is a married man and he had an adulterous affair. I'm just keeping it real. Moving on, hopefully in time, his wife won't divorce him because that's grounds for divorce when a man has had an adulterous affair. But Kobe Bryant should feel ashamed for what has happened. I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> won't he divorce is. him. That's grounds for divorce. Doesn't his voice hurt from yelling? Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, why is he yelling? Talk about liking to hear yourself talk. Jennifer, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I'm a psychiatrist. An in, MD? Pardon me? MD? An MD, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I was trained, uh, just to, just to kind of just say, I was trained at Harvard Medical School, did my training at Mass General Hospital in Boston. So You know what's weird? Like, I go to a psychiatrist four days a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my guy's a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. and then sometimes I think, and they and the guy who recommended him to me said you should really go see a male psychiatrist because of some of my issues, and uh, but I often fantasize it would be nice to go it see would a be nice to see a woman a yeah. female psychiatrist and like you you show up in a short mini skirt and, and then <laughs> like I, you know, no, you know there's no excitement when you go and then we yeah, fall it's in a love very exciting. Because that's my personality. For my patients. I want to be the favorite patient. You oh, know, yeah. that's so. why you can't go. Wow. Is there any chance that one of your patients could bang you? Uh, no. None. No. Do you ever that's fantasize right. about that? Do I? Yeah. Uh, no. I, I work with children mostly. Oh. <laughs> that would be really. That would be really. Uh, that'd be really. Uh, that'd be really. Bad. I didn't know that. That's I didn't bad. know that, uh, Your Highness. We're sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, anyways, you were making a point. Pardon me? You were making a point. Yes. Uh, I was just calling because um, what Casey was saying, you know, it, it just, it, you know, I think he, re you know, I know that it's, I would never diagnose someone over the, over the telephone. Yeah. But you know what? He's Certainly so easily diagnosable. Never, Pardon me? I say he's so easily diagnosable, even I could diagnose him <laughs> over the phone. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think that he, he really does need to see somebody, yeah. uh, you know, a professional in this area. Sure. It's, it's a sickness the same way if you had recurring stomach illness. Yes. And you went to your primary care physician, you would say, okay, after a while, I have these issues, and you would get a referral. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. And, and Tom made that point to him. And, and you know what? And Casey told me he's going to go see him. Oh, good. So okay. uh, that, and that's, the, and that's the other thing is that, the, you know, the person that's sitting there, they're, they're a doctor. They're not there judging you and well, he has ta paranoia. talking about you with anyone else. This I know. Is, he thinks that. Pardon? Well, that's part of his paranoia. It, yeah. And that's part yeah. of him wanting to be special. Everyone's talking about him. But he is a paranoid. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's got real problems. He thinks people are after him. Uh, doctor, should I, would I be safe around KC if I kept a tranquilizer gun handy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, doctor. Thank you for the call. <laughs> that's Jennifer, who is a psychiatrist, Harvard MD. Harvard trained. She Harvard hard. trained. She sounds hot, doesn't she? Yeah. Don't start in. Just no, 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 I do. Let's, let's, uh, I'll do whatever. Let's just move right. on. Because I'm keeping it real. Just keep it real. Right, let's move, move on. Casey! We gotta, we gotta say anything. All right. Just I'm take care of the problem. Today's subject matter. Let's keep it real because I'm keeping it Do real. you know that the genitalia area... <laughs> also, seriously, it's all about now. Kobe Bryant needs to step aside. And then also, with his endorsement from Nike, his image has been damaged. And then hopefully in time... Other things also will cause him damage in the public eye. Okay. <laughs> Bedroom philosopher. Yes. Raymond Norman, Negro woman of the South. Her advice to Kobe Bryant. I mean, his advice to Kobe. Bryant. I'll tell you one thing. Raymond keeps it real, and that's and what I admire. Always going to keep it real because real. I'm keeping it real. Thank you. Zeke, you're on the air. Hey. Zeke. Yes. How are you, Howard? Okay. A little mad from uh, what happened yesterday on the air about me. Who are you? 
What's that? Who are you? Zeke Trossel from, uh, I'm a producer with, uh, WTTV. Oh, remember Jenks' oh, phone I... call? Yeah. Oh, Zeke. Oh, yeah. Zeke, you're Zeke? Hey, let me bring everyone up to speed then, Zeke. I'll play the tape. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> oh, you're the Zeke? The Zeke. Hold on, let me... Uh... Oh, we're so happy to meet you. Yeah, Zeke. Zeke. All right, Captain Jenks made a phony phone call to Midday Live. I'm just, the reason I'm vamping here, I'm looking for it. Right. And none of my staff will come in and help me. But anyway, here it is. <laughs> so after the phone call, and Captain Jenks got away with his phony phone call on Steve, the host of the show. Yes. Jillian Barbary, who can't shut up, starts talking about how her and Zeke... She made eye contact with Zeke. And she knew that it was a phony phone call, and Zeke knew, too. Right. And I was like, well, it might be nice if you told Steve, you two. <laughs> but anyway, here's, here is the phony phone call in case anyone out there, lest anyone missed it. Bob Hope was famous about his writers. Uh, he had great writers. He would tell jokes about his writers. Gene Allen Perret is on the line with us right now, who's uh, one of Mr. Hope's writers through the years. Uh, Gene, hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Uh, how long were you with Bob Hope? I was with Bob for over 40 years. Was it a steady job? Uh, it was off and on, but mostly, yes, 40 years, uh, pretty much steady, yes. All right, what was, it, what was it like? What were the demands on you? What was he looking for? What was the process like? Well, it would be, we would write, and Bob would revise the script if he didn't think it was funny, but he, he would take what we had, and he made it funny when he put it on the air. It was always funny. Did he have certain rules about what he would do and wouldn't do? Uh, Bob was a, was a delightful man, and he never really um, argued with anyone, and he had always had a smile on his face, and, and uh, he, he definitely will be sadly, sadly missed. You know, you often hear stories, as you are well aware, horror stories about comedians and their treatment of the writers. Yes. Uh, apparently, this is not the case. Oh, not the case with Bob. No, not at all. Bob was mo just the most gentle and, and sincere and, and, and funny man that you could possibly possibly want to work with. And and relative to his status, I mean, there there was, at his height, there certainly was no bigger star, but then he became beyond the star, uh, an institution, uh, and yet he was uh, pretty much down to earth when you worked with him? No, he was always down to earth. He, he, he was just the, the nicest man. Would you like Howard Stern's balls on your chin? I would uh, not today, but thank you for calling. All right. Jerk off. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's make our transition here. See, we get to our people are naive out there. Steve. Yeah. Can I tell you something yeah. funny? I know we don't have a camera, yeah. but when that caller first came on, I looked at Zeke and I said, that guy's yeah. way too young way to too have worked young. with Bob I, let me, And let me tell you something. I thought the same. She looked at Zeke. Yeah. Absolutely the Steve same. Steve needs the help. Yeah, but Zeke she's looking at. <laughs> and I think also our, and also I never heard of this writer, and they, which is another thing. I turned uh, to Zeke and I was like, this guy's, he's got to be. But when you, have, when you have whoever took the call. They, no, but they don't, yeah, they, they don't know. know. What do they know? What do they know? Uh. <laughs> Why don't we go to Style File? Well, I'd love to. You know, to. we have more. We got, uh, oh, we're going to take a break here. Um, uh, and the answer, by the way, is no, I wouldn't like to do any of those things. <laughs> I, I looked at Zeke. Who are you, Zeke? Like, like, why did she look at you? What is your job? Producer. Oh. Producer. I turned to Zeke and said, look at the scorpion on Steve's neck. <laughs> well, Captain Jenks is one sick man. Yeah. yeah. You're no kidding. No well, kidding. Well, wait, uh, you should send him to therapy. I'm not sending anyone to therapy, except for KC. <laughs> KC's our responsibility. Captain Jenks, what did you want to say to Zeke? How you doing, Zeke? Hey, Zeke. Sick man. You are a sick, sick man. If you knew it was me, why didn't you cut me off? Well, I wasn't sure if you were the producer or whatever you said you were. Um, were you embarrassed? Oh, very much embarrassed. I mean, Bob Hope was a great person. Oh, his days come and going. Hey, Zeke, did Steve, the host of the show, ream you afterwards for putting Captain Jenks through? Well, that, certainly. Yeah. I mean, what, what was all that about you calling me and Captain telling me Jenks that I needed to see a life. psychiatrist? What's that? What was all that you were calling me and telling me I needed to see a psychiatrist? <laughs> oh, he's, uh, you need some help, man. Hey, Zeke, so what happened? I, so, so Captain Jenks claims you've been calling his house now and harassing him. No, he only called me once. Zeke oh. called me once. Didn't yeah. Steve call you too? No, the um, the, I guess like what's his name? Steve uh, Edwards. Yes. He's the one who called me. Yeah, Steve called you and Z called you. Yeah. 
What did Zeke say to you? He said I should see a psychiatrist. <laughs> well, you definitely should. <laughs> Zeke, now you say you're angry, so what did you want to tell everyone? Uh, I just I just want everybody to know he's a sick man. All right. And, and we need some help. We knew that. Okay. Well, at least you're going to therapy, Howard. Yeah. Zeke doesn't sound too uh, on the ball. Zeke? Zeke? Yeah, Zeke, are you on the ball? <laughs> I don't think that was the guy. I don't really think that was Zeke. I don't think that's Zeke. He didn't sound like a producer. Jenks, that doesn't sound like Zeke. We know Zeke. That's not Zeke. Well, I never saw him on the camera, so I don't even know what he looks like. Did that sound like the guy who's been calling you? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Zeke now said, I get how Jenks gets through. <laughs> Zeke sounds like a guy who's been listening to Jillian Barbary. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, if you were exposed to Jillian Barbary over and over again. Talk to Zeke. Talk to Zeke. I'd like to bang her. Join the club. <laughs> That's Captain <laughs> Jenks. I knew right away I should have told Steve, but I told Zeke. I can't blame it. And then I knew it was Captain Jenks. <laughs> Darn it, Lucy talks too much. I can't talk enough on the show. Steve's really old. He doesn't look like a... Huh? You know, Steve, this may sound funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, Steve? I look at Zeke. Zeke, Zeke looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, so this guy gets on the phone. He's like... Hello. <laughs> I'm Zeke. Hi, uh, it's Zeke. I can barely... I feel like I've been punched in the head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jenks. Thanks, Howard. There you go. Captain Jenks, uh, his drama continues with his phony phone calls and people calling him. Yeah, this one has been ongoing. Yes, Big Black. Big Black, you there? Yeah. Yo, what's up, my brother? Hey, brother. Oh, hello there. How's things at the... Uh, the homeless shelter. shelter, yeah. Looking up, pretty soon I should be getting my own apartment. A section eight, as you say? Oh, yeah, you know about that, huh, Robert? You told us. Yeah, we, we paid attention to you. <laughs> We're one of the few people that do. Yeah, I should be getting my checks maybe next week so I can pay the landlord and move on in out the shelter at last. Yeah, we have all that in our big black notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's my big black notebook? <laughs> so now, I can... Yeah, I'm the big black notebook. Yeah. All right, big black, so I got to go. What can we do for you? you? Uh, while I was listening to uh, my other black compatriot, um, Raymond Norman, um, it was actually bleeped twice by your censor there. You're kidding. No. I, oh, I, I, I heard you make a joke about vaginal area. but what I never you said was vaginal area. area. Yeah, genitalia what? area. Was there anything in there that should have been bleeped? No. I would have bleeped it if I felt it. Was it was all clinical. Oh, here we go. So here it ruined the whole go. effect, man. Tom's I know, back. I know. Uh, I tell you, I'm... I'm so done with this radio job, and, and anyone who thinks I'm joking, I swear to you, I'm not. Is it possible to clear your tapes ahead of time with the censor there? I, you know what? We're just sitting here talking. I, I'm sitting here talking. I've listened to this tape a hundred times. I edited it down so it would be suitable for air. Yeah, it's a little bit racy when he goes vaginal area, but he doesn't say anything sexual or anything. I mean, it's completely clinical. They're going crazy back there bleeping me. Is because Tom, Tom I'll tell you what happened. Tom went on vacation for a week. Oh. And Tom came back all freaked out that certain things were on the air while he was gone, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know what? Now, so now the new reaction is let's bleep everything. Mm. And I can't take it. Is Tom there now? Oh, yeah, he's back. He's back all rested, cancer-free. Don't ask. He's all, he's all elated. He's cancer-free. My luck. So let's have somebody come to um, the mic and explain why they bleeped it. Yeah, vaginal area. Give me a goddamn break. Yeah. The guy wasn't even saying anything sexual. No. He's talking about a rape case. It sounds like something a doctor would say. Hey, Casey, I'm not telling you to do this, but if you're going to snap, do me a favor and snap with Tom. <laughs> not me. Could you snap Tom's way? Yeah, snap Tom's way <laughs> when you go on your rampage. <laughs> Any chance of one of those notes on your TV saying kill Tom? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe we ought to start planning real I mean, things. really, what is going on back there? Raymond Norman's message is not obscene or indecent. Who's coming in to explain themselves to me, boys? Yeah. I've given up, though. I used to go back every day and fight with right. them and, and, and point out that it's ridiculous. And, it, and, and, and I meet this wall known as Tom and the other Indian guy. I don't know his name. 
Aji. I meet those, and I meet this wall like, we didn't know, we we think it is sexual. So who's editing the show today? Well, uh, Dead Air Dave, whose name is, I, don't, I hate calling him Dead Air Dave because that's not his name. I want to know his Indian name. He's Indian? Yeah. <laughs> Big Black. He's not. He's Indian. That, that settles it. I got no, no problem with Indians. But you know what's funny, though? When but I, I say use your real name. You're going you're gonna to be editing well, my show. Dead Air Dave shouldn't be on the button. It should be a guy with a name. Yeah. I don't want Dead Air Dave. Because you know what? You should call him Haji or something. What? Well, I found out what he believed. But, of course, if I said it, it would just be bleeped again. But I'll, I'll give it to you the best I can.